Hello, everyone. I'm Jessica Moreno with the Coalition for Sonoran Desert Protection, and I'm going to go over really briefly how to identify or at least document species that you see using iNaturalist. This is going to be super important for when we do roadkill surveys and also BioBlitz events. Um, so I'm going to share my screen, and there's a whole bunch of video tutorials you can go through online as well. And if you have any questions, please reach out. All right. So here we're going to get started. Let me share my screen and show you uh, what we're looking at here. What we're going to do to start, if you can see this, <clears throat> um, is we're going to go to inaturalist.org, the website. And if you go along the top of our uh, menu bar here, you'll see that there is a more section. And down here is help getting started, and video tutorials. Those three things will be the most helpful to you. For getting started, the first thing you need to do if you do not have an account yet is to sign up. You're gonna need an email address. You can choose a username and then a password. One really important piece of this is your license agreement. So this is totally up to you. Um, this is how you allow others, including projects such as the Coalition or uh, Toronto National Park or others, um, to use your photos and how they should credit your photos. Uh, so recommended is to license your photos so that um, scientists can use your data. Um, and there's other options here too. And if you have questions about that, iNaturalist has a whole page um, under help about the licensing agreements and um, the different options. If you are a professional photographer, you might want to have more limitations on the use of your photos, for instance. Um, <clears throat> all of that is, is uh, up to you. For now, we're just going to do their recommended, yes, you may use my photos with credit uh, for science. Okay, then you're going to create your account. Once you've done that and you've logged in, so here I will log in as myself. You will be given an account, <clears throat> and this is the website version. We are going to go over the app as well, uh, where you can see your own profile. You can set that up whenever you would like with a bio and, and all that fun stuff. Um, all your observations are going to be in here, so you can see all the observations you have made um, on an interactive map, and you can click on them and see the pictures and whatnot. You can see the list of species um, and all of that. Okay. That's the main piece of this. So first, just getting your account set up, exploring the website a little bit. And then once you have your website set up, I'm sorry, your account set up, um, I'd like you to go and uh, download the app onto your phone. So when we're in the field, we want to have our smartphone with us or a tablet set up uh, with the app. You can download the Apple or um, the Google Play version. Um, and there's a video tutorial here on how to do that. I'm going to walk you through it really quickly as well. Um, essentially, you need to have your location turned on on your phone and the app downloaded in advance. The other thing that you need to have accomplished before we go out into the field or before you start your survey is to add the project. So I'm gonna back up just a second here. Back to our profile, right? There are a number of projects and you can explore in the community um, menu all the different people. So you can follow people, you can follow different projects. Um, these are some of the projects that I belong to. What you want to do here for this effort is we're going to search for um, Saguaro National Park. And we have NPS Saguaro National Park. So that is the project that we're looking at today. Um, and what you want to do is you want to join. It's going to say up here, join. I'm already part of this project. I don't want to leave it. And when you do that, the project shows up in your list of projects. 
And this is important so that as you're collecting data, you can add your observations to this particular project. Another project that you can add data to here is the Coalition for Sonoran Desert Protection Safe Passages Project, CSDP Safe Passages. Um, now, why this is important is because whenever you collect a data point, it's going to ask you first particular questions. At minimum, it wants to know what you think you see, and if you don't know, that's okay, what species it is, in other words. It's going to want to know where you are. This is why we turn the location in on, on our phones so that our phones automatically download our GPS location for us. Um, and it, it's going to want to know when. So again, your phone will automatically put the date and time. When, where, and what. Now, as you add it to a new project, like for instance, the CSDP Safe Passages project, we ask a number of extra questions that you can add. So things like, did what you see, is it alive or is it dead? Can you at least identify it to... Um, a level, if you're unable to identify what it is, especially for roadkill, do you know if it's a reptile? Do you know if it's an invertebrate? And those kinds of things. That way, if it's totally unknown, we can at least get it down to clade. We call it clade. Um, we have an identification confidence. So you're welcome to say, I'm really certain that this was what I say it is, or I don't know. Um, we have a number observed. Sometimes you find more than one um, individual animal together in one place. Um, and the closest milepost is helpful to know also. So for roadkill data gathering, these extra things are helpful. But at the bare minimum, what we need to do for our survey is to get the location, the date, and the photo of what you're what you're taking or what you're recording, okay? Um, what we do after we've collected a, um, our observations at the end of our survey is that we go back to base camp or you can go back to your car or back home onto the computer um, and double check that all of our points are successfully uploaded. One of the cool things about iNaturalist on the app is that if you don't have good cell service, um, it will store it on your phone. And then as soon as you get into Wi-Fi service, it will upload at that point. So that's another um, thing to be thinking about. But then we can come back and look at all of our observations and double check that um, everything's in there and everything is correct. If we need to make changes, we can edit it here in the, in the uh, computer or in the app, okay? Um, other people could come in and help ID the photograph and verify what you're seeing. So this one here is marked as needs ID. That means I'm waiting for somebody else to come along and say, okay, uh, yeah, that looks like a mammal or something more specific and agree to that. And then it becomes research grade uh, observation. So research grade observations can only happen when we have a photograph. You can also take um, sound files for like bird sound, bird song, and such as well, um, but for our purposes, we're 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 using images. Okay, so when we're in the field, you have your app on your phone. I'm gonna just go back over here to our tutorial. Um, you have your app on your phone. You come across something you're you're waiting to document, and again, please watch this video. I'll put a link um, along with it so you can see how to do this too. Um, and I'm going to just um, stop sharing for a second so that you can see me talking. Um, but with your phone, make sure the location is on. What we want to have with us as part of our field gear is a ruler or some version of scale um, so that when you take your picture, you can um, help identify what you're looking at, especially in the case of roadkill. We don't know always what we're looking at. So we need scale. So put your ruler down. Um, and you're going to take an image. What we want you to do is take two photographs, okay? One image is going to be um, 90 degree angle directly above with the um, 
species filling most of the frame, make sure the scale is in there, take a picture. And then we also want a picture that shows kind of like the location of the landscape that we're in. So you can take a picture from back further that kind of shows the context of where that animal is. Um, and, and so those two images, you can do this two ways in the app. The first way is to open the app, um, the iNaturalist app. All right. And sorry, I'm just setting this up. <clears throat> All right. In the app, it's, I'm sorry. Again, watch the video. In the app, it's going to list all of the observations you've made in the past. And it has a little green um, uh, button with a plus. So you're going to push that and it's going to ask you, okay, we're going to add a new observation. Do you want to take a photo or do you want to choose an image? So it's up to you if you want to take the image before you even open the app <laughs> and do this. Um, I find it easier to have the app open as I'm walking and doing my survey. And then when I come across an observation, I add a new observation. I take my photo and you can take more than one photo. You confirm the photo. And then on the screen, it will show you um, your, your location and your date and time. So make sure those look accurate. It will also ask for location visibility. This means, do you want the public to know where this is? Open means everybody can see the exact GPS location. If you make it obscured, it's within a circled range, a radius, or you can make it private. Please understand that if you share the observation with a project, those project leaders then can see the accurate location. But this is super helpful if you come across something like a live Gila monster and you don't want the public to necessarily know exactly where that is because you don't want it to get collected or something like that, um, you can make that private. And then you're only sharing that GPS location with the, the projects that you trust, right? Um, so that is, a, that is something to be paying attention to with your location. iNaturalist does take uh, threatened and endangered species at a certain level um, and automatically obscure them. So that's nice to know, but it also doesn't always know what is sensitive or protected at a state level or a local level. So um, that's for you to, to decide and determine and put in there. Um, then what you want to do is add it to a project and then you select the projects that you have already joined. So this is why you need to join the project before your survey starts. Once you select your project, it will ask you um, the questions, the additional questions that project might have. Okay. Um, if you are in a hurry, hopefully not, but if you are, you can fill those out afterwards um, or add it to a project afterwards. I find that it is better to just go through and answer every single question and take your time in the field and make sure you've completed everything um, there while you're with the observation and you can remember everything, right? Um, once you do that, then you click the little green check button and it will save it. It's saved on your phone and as soon as you have Wi-Fi, it uploads to the cloud, okay? So we will have a base camp set up with our survey. And what we're going to do is have um, people who can go through all the observations with you together and um, help identify and make sure everything's correct. And then later we can go through and, and do some double checking if we need to. Um, so that's it. Um, big Big pieces are make sure you have an iNaturalist account before we get started. Make sure you add the uh, Sorrell National Park and the CSD Peep Safe Passages projects before we get started. And then once we're out there, we'll show everything in person. We'll do a little in-person training. Um, you can go through the videos in advance if that's helpful to you. And um, we'll be on hand. So if there are any questions or problems, we can hopefully help you out. All right. We really appreciate all your help with this. This is going to be a fun, fun event, and I hope that you enjoy it too. So thanks so much for coming out and helping us gather this important data. We'll see you soon.